Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this is the view from the Chang'e 5 lander as it descended towards the moon. Now, this image sequence is about one frame per second. In fact, there's, it's even worse than that. There's skipped frames and things like that. So I really wanted to have give you something better. And so uh, I actually spent some time taking up the frames, cleaning them up, and then running them through some fancy AI to produce this. I'm actually quite proud of this in the end. Uh, so on the left, you've got the reconstructed video sequence and on the right, uh, you have sort of the ground track there. So that large crater that's coming towards us is Rumker K. It's the only named uh, crater along this route. So this processing thing actually took a ridiculous amount of processing power. It took several hours on my brand spanking new RTX 3070 video card. So to get an idea of scale, those two large craters that are coming down, those are both about two kilometers wide. And of course, spacecraft is skimming across the lunar surface at over a kilometer per second. It's in the process of slowing down and decelerating towards a landing spot. There's a mountain out there on the right that just rise above the plain of, uh, you know, the ocean of storms. That's about 10 kilometers long, uh, you know, from left to right and about 500 meters high. I should also mention that this thing is running at three times regular speed. The whole descent takes a lot longer. That large crater we're about to pass is about two kilometers wide. And when we pass it, we're about 15 kilometers from the landing site. The spacecraft is still moving at hundreds of meters per second. And it's at altitudes below that of a you know, commercial aircraft. So what we're going to look for is there's a crater that's right in the middle and that is going to be very close to our landing site. Now, as we get close to that crater, you'll see there's a couple of smaller craters on the edge. So the large crater is about uh, 300 meters across. The two small craters on its edge are about 30 or 40 meters. So we're just going to pass slightly past that. Now, the um, the spacecraft is now orienting down to start looking for actual landing sites because, of course, this has an entirely autonomous landing cycle. It's going to look for terrain that will support a landing. That means it's going to try to avoid boulders and other stuff. So the next time this crater comes into view, you can see it now, you're going to start seeing rocks and things like that that it's avoiding. So it traverses across the surface. This is going to the east, by the way, across the moon. And it finds a small cluster of three craters here. Now, that little triangle of three craters it's going to land in the middle of, that's about 50 meters across. At this altitude, I'm thinking that it's maybe, you know, 100 meters or less below, above the surface, so 300 feet. And, yeah, it picks a spot and descends down into it. Now, at this point, the interpolation gets really glitchy so I just switch over to you know straight up showing the frames as they were produced. So that was a pretty spectacular landing. Of course we didn't get to see it live in real time because China isn't as courageous as say India or Israel when it comes to a risky moon landing. So again this landing site is in the middle of the ocean of storms. This is just to give you an idea of where it is if you were to look at the moon from the northern hemisphere. If you're from the southern hemisphere, you have to flip it upside down. And we know exactly where the spacecraft touched down because the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter made a pass very soon afterwards and was able to take a photograph showing the spacecraft on the surface of the moon. So while the lander was taking you know, some nice photos showing the surface, it was its main task was, of course, to get samples of the surface. Uh, it had this two meter long drill which uh, you know, was comparable to previous drills that had been performed. Uh, they also scooped material from the surface of the moon. Uh, they have a sample return container, which I presume you know, differentiates this material. What happens with this, by the way, is this is a core drill, uh, which means it's a hollow drill, and there's like a, a lining around it. And they basically pull the core out wrapped in this lining and then wrap that lining around a cylinder like is a, a cable of, of core material. Uh, okay, it's kind of hard to explain. They did also release this panorama that was taken using the camera. This is like some ridiculous resolution because it's made up of a bunch of different images. One of the things I like about the Chinese imagery is that the moon shows a lot more color than we ever saw in Apollo. So yeah, I think that, by the way, is the mountain that I pointed out on the way down, the one that's got a couple of peaks and is you know, 500 meters tall. 
It's about 13 kilometers, you know, south by southwest of the landing site. I don't know enough about lunar geography to know if this has a name, but I'm sure it does. I think the lander only spent like a day on the surface before it had finished its operations and had loaded the sample return canister into the ascent vehicle. So the ascent vehicle uses your know, rocket engine obviously to reach orbit, but initially it gets given a push by a spring to make sure it gets enough clearance and then it lights its motor and of course ascends towards uh, space. Uses liquid propellant thrusters by the looks of things. I haven't actually figured out what kind of propellant it's used, but it has multiple propellant tanks, so it could be a bipropellant, it could be a monopropellant. Either way, uh, I think it goes into initially a 15 by 200 kilometer orbit, and uh, the vehicle has, goes into this orbit, same orbital plane as the vehicle remaining in orbit, and once it gets there, it deploys solar panels and deploys a microwave you know, beacon, so that the other spacecraft can catch it and rendezvous with it in space. Now this rendezvous is one of the big firsts of the mission because previously all the rendezvous in lunar orbit have been with crew on board the spacecraft. This is entirely autonomous. The most distant autonomous rendezvous I believe is in geostationary orbit when the mission extension vehicle extended the mission of a communication satellite. So the orbiter has to locate the, the launch vehicle, approach it and dock with it so that they can transfer the material across. Now, strictly speaking, this isn't necessary for a lunar sample mission. Russia demonstrated a direct ascent sample return and clearly the technology is well within China's reach if they wanted to build the thing this way. Instead, I think they're deliberately doing it the hard way because they want to test the limits. They want to test new technology. So here we see the view of the docking approaching from behind here. And what it's looking for, these three spokes, these are the handlebars that it's going to try and grab with its uh, capture system here. The core of that ascender, by the way, is very, very small. It's a meter, you know, a few feet across, and the vehicle mass is 400 kilograms, according to Chinese scientists. And that makes it probably the smallest vehicle to have ever lifted off from a planetoid spherical body and got into orbit. So yeah, the capture system grabs these bars and uh, positions them into their cradle so the vehicle can then retract them together and make sure that the two spacecraft are mated. That then allows the transfer of the sample canister into the re-entry capsule, which is part was going to be carried by the return vehicle into uh, an Earth return trajectory. So this return vehicle is very similar in shape to a Soyuz and it has reaction control thrusters and the ability to control its descent through the atmosphere. There is of course the um, the door, the hatch being closed behind it because they want obviously have to protect this. And now the capsule is sealed, they can uh, detach themselves from the orbit module. The or they actually lose the docking adapter as well for mass reasons. So the orbiter spacecraft is going to head back to Earth and we're going to have a sample return in a week or so. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.